For the past couple of months, we've been seeing some really strange leaks when it comes to Apple's Mac lineup for the rest of the year, including the new redesigned MacBook Air, which might be more disappointing than we all hoped for. At one point, we were expecting a new redesigned Mac Mini and a 13-inch M2 MacBook Pro at Apple's March event, but that didn't happen because we got the Mac Studio and the Studio Display. Then we got some weird leaks from 9to5Mac telling us that the high-end Mac Mini isn't even coming until until next year, and that's exactly what Ming Chi Kuo said last month, claiming that the Mac Pro, the iMac Pro, and the Mac Mini aren't coming this year at all, which he confirmed after the March event. And that right there is a real shocker because all of us were expecting the Mac Pro to come at WWDC because that's the last piece of the puzzle to complete Apple's two-year transition to their own chips. And even worse, he predicted that the new Mac Mini in 2023 will likely remain the same form factor design, which would be a bit embarrassing for Apple. But the biggest bombshell of all that I was not expecting was when Ming Chu Kuo gave us some updated predictions for the new redesigned MacBook Air. And trust me, this came as a complete shock. He said that mass production will begin as soon as the end of the second quarter, which is June, with an M1 chip, no mini LED display, an all new form factor design, and more color options. And yes, he did just say the M1 chip, which is exactly the same chip that's already in the current MacBook Air. And when I first heard this, I completely dismissed it because it didn't make any sense at all to me, and it just sounded unrealistic. But now that I'm really thinking about what's going on over the past month, as well as some major leaks from Mark Gurman, I think it could actually make sense. But before I get into how Mark Gurman's old leaks and a brand new report on Sunday line up with his new redesigned M1 MacBook Air theory, I want to get into some recent developments that are starting to make me lean towards this worst case scenario for the MacBook Air. As we all know, the tech industry has been facing supply chain issues over the past year or so, and even Apple has been impacted by them. But now, I think things are getting much worse, especially over this past weekend, so let's begin. It all started about a month ago on March 9th, with Ming Shu Kuo reporting that Apple may not launch any new mini LED products this year due to cost concerns, which is extremely disappointing. Making things even worse, because of supply chain issues, Ming reported that regular iPhone 14 models coming this year will actually feature the same old A15 chip that we already have in the iPhone 13 Pro lineup. And a day after that report, 9to5Mac confirmed it with their own sources as well. Going further, Ming said that there seems to be no reason to be optimistic about the 2022 mobile phone market with many companies, including Apple, cutting orders, which implies that the entire mobile phone industry is facing structural challenges. Then on March 27th, Ming cut his shipment estimate of the iPhone SE by as much as 50% due to lowered demand. But wait, it gets worse. Ming said that major Chinese Android phone brands have cut orders by about 20% compared to the original 2022 shipment plan due to lower consumer confidence. And that's global markets, not just China. And the scariest part of all is that he mentioned that inventory levels of certain RF chips have exceeded six to nine months of supply, but smartphone demand is still going down due to low consumer confidence about the economy. Going further, it looks like Apple has cut AirPods 3 orders by 30% or more for later this year because people aren't willing to spend an extra $50 on AirPods 3, which could mean that people's bank accounts could be beginning to get tight. And now let's get into the absolute worst possible scenario that started to gain attention over the weekend, which is the massive lockdowns in China. Apparently, over 193 million residents are in full or partial lockdown with food shortages throughout even Shanghai, China, 
where subway passenger volumes have slowed to a crawl, being almost 100% shut down. Even worse, air traffic going through Shanghai's two major airports has dropped to levels lower than what was seen at the height of the early 2020 lockdowns. And as far as the supply chain on the cargo ship side, almost 500 ships are waiting off East China's ports because of the lockdowns. And this is a big deal because it's not just China that's getting impacted. About half of German companies' supply chains, logistics, and warehouses are completely disrupted or severely impacted by China's lockdown situation. And in terms of the United States' impact, all of this is happening on top of the already dire US supply chain issues, which peaked again in March with logistics prices hitting a new high. And even Tesla's Shanghai factory could be shut down until at least mid-May, according to new reports. And because of all of this going on, ming Chi Kuo just reported that the lockdowns are starting to affect iPhone assembly. And in the best case scenario, complete resumption of production may not be possible until late April or even early May. And he mentioned that the longer the lockdowns persist, the further effect on consumer confidence, which is already bad. And this would probably be detrimental to the shipments of consumer electronics, including Apple products in the second half of 2022. And now when you take all of this info into perspective, it begins to make sense why Apple would decide to drop the mini LED plans for the MacBook Air redesign, as well as reuse the A15 chips in the new iPhone 14 regular models. So what if the supply chain issues are worse than we think? And just to give an ounce of evidence to that idea, Apple has just confirmed to routers that the iPhone 13 is now also being produced in India as the US tech giant Apple tries to reduce reliance on its Chinese supply chain. So now with that said, I'm finally beginning to believe Ming when he says that the redesigned MacBook Air is coming with the old M1 chip because the only reason this would ever make sense is because the supply chain issues are worse than we think. And it may be too expensive to put the M2 chip in the low-end MacBook Air. So if this is all true, Apple's best option is to do exactly what ming Chi Kuo was saying release a redesigned MacBook Air with a bunch of new color options, which regular consumers are going to love and buy, regardless of if it still has the M1 chip, because many consumers don't even know or care that an M2 chip is supposed to be coming soon. The M1 is honestly more than powerful enough for basic users, and going this route will allow Apple to save a lot of those new M2 chips in terms of the supply for their more expensive products products, seeing as the MacBook Air is Apple's best-selling laptop, and it'll be much easier to give it the M1 chip since they're already mass-producing it for so many products, including two of their iPads. And this finally brings me to some old and new reports by Mark Gurman, which didn't really make sense until you consider ming Chi Kuo's prediction of a new redesigned M1 MacBook Air. Many months ago, he predicted that we would be getting both a new redesigned MacBook Air and a new 13-inch MacBook Pro, which would be reusing the old design from the M1 MacBook Pro. And before, we thought it made absolutely zero sense because we assumed that both of those MacBooks would be getting the new M2 chip. So why in the world would anybody pay more money for the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the same performance, but with the older design. Obviously, people are gonna want the new MacBook Air. But now, if the new MacBook Air is truly getting the same M1 chip that we already have, then the people who really care about performance would easily pay more money for the new M2 13-inch MacBook Pro, even if it has the old design, because the pros care more about performance than the looks. And then, with that said, Said, the lineup would finally make a ton of sense again, with the redesigned M1 MacBook Air at the bottom, then the M2 old design 13-inch MacBook Pro, and then the new 14 and 16-inch high-end MacBook Pros. 
And if you think about it, it makes so much sense for this new M2 13 inch MacBook Pro to use the old design, because if Apple gave it the new design and the M2 chip, it would be stepping on the toes of the higher end 14 inch MacBook Pro. But with the old design, it no longer will be doing that. And now, Mark Gurman's latest Power On report points to two new Macs coming around the middle of the year, potentially at WWDC, and one of those is likely the MacBook Air. And if you think about it, if Apple isn't ready to launch the M2 chip until fall due to supply issues, giving the M1 chip to the MacBook Air means that they could literally launch it whenever they want to, as soon as a redesign is ready, which could be around the summertime. And then as for that second Mac that Mark Gurman was talking about, maybe they can update one of the other Macs with the M1 Pro chip, perhaps the Mac Mini, the higher end, to replace the Intel model that is currently still for sale on Apple's website. So with that said, to sum up this entire video, the recent supply chain and economic issues are already impacting Apple, which could lead to the new redesigned MacBook Air sticking to the same old M1 chip, which is disappointing because we were all expecting the M2. Now, if you totally disagree with my thoughts on this video, then let me know down in the comment section below. But if you learned something new, then go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one and check out one of those two right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.